And uh, welcome back to the final hour of news. Uh, my guests already seated. But as tradition, let's take a look at uh, the newspaper back in 2017 to the day today. Have these issues remained the same or have they changed? Here is your headline of the bold newspaper back in 2017. Now the headline right there, Raila Odinga, why you have no unga? And you're complaining of unga right now. And uh, minister told, ministers told to quit. Nasa boss accuses cartels of frustrating the importation of cheap maize from Ethiopia and demands Bet, who was really Bet, was then minister, and Moi Kiunjuri to resign. Well, they are no longer in uh, government. In fact, after the second term of President Uru Kenyatta, they never came back as ministers. They were posted, uh, um, they were given other jobs. But that was the headline then, Raila Dinga, why you have no... Same, same things right now. People are asking for the reduction in cost of living. And last week, the MPs, while passing uh, the bill on tax, I mean, they spared uh, food. They took alcohol about six, about 6% six and something else, which is not important, but food was spared. Now, that's the headline. But there's also an important story right there, John, if you could just put it back at the top of the newspaper. This was uh, billionaire Kashogi, um, if you all remember this, uh, who made Kenya playground died now curtains fall on arms dealer once uh, targeted richest man in the world so the uh, playboy would have no qualms spending 25 million a day on lavish parties right at the top if you could just scroll the top of the newspaper i was the story on page 12 and 13 of uh, your uh, bold newspaper then in 2013 but aside from that there were other stories doctors baby dies as nurses cut off oxygen and SGR would spur urban planning in the regions. Still a big story today, and a lot of people still speaking about the SGR and all. But I was the ball newspaper time now to begin our conversation. Thank you so much, Walter Mongare, yes. aka <coughs> Nyambane, for coming to the show tonight. Thank you. Thank Since you. Since these Jenny. guys took back your certificate, this is the first time you're speaking. Yes. And and we are happy you are able to come for the show tonight because a lot of Kenyans want to know. You were cleared. You were the first candidate mm -hmm. out of five who went before the IBC first yes. to be cleared. Mm -hmm. You were given the certificate. A day later, you were called for the original one. Yes. You possess a valid IABC nomination certificate mm -hmm. to run for president. Yes. But you're not a candidate. I mean, they revoked it. What happened? I still, and we still hold this certificate because we don't have any formal communication from IBC asking us. As of today? As of today. Okay. Uh, Ken, I must let you know that we were surprised just like you were because we watched the revocation of our certificate on social media and on TV mm -hmm. uh, just like you did. And uh, I want to believe that we, we have faith in the institutions of government and therefore it will be nice uh, that communication and correspondences also respect that mm -hmm. because we are an institution as a party we were validly cleared by the same commission, given the certificate by the same commission, after they had disqualified about five people, okay. four people before mm -hmm. us. Yeah, because you're number five. Yes, and mm -hmm. then um, a week later. Were you surprised by the turn of events? Because yes. were it not that uh, Safina leader, yes. Jimmy Wanjigi, went before the commission, you could be having your certificate today, you know that? I, 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 I don't know that, and I wouldn't say I know that. What I know, mm -hmm. Ken, and this is the first time, as you say, we are speaking, and I want to ask you this question, Ken. Put it this way. Uh, your child comes home and is been given a position one with the highest marks, which means they are progressing to the next level of education. Mm -hmm. And uh, you watch in the media and in the newspaper, that or oh, that was a mistake uh, bring back the certificate bring back the report form because you are not number one how is that the mistake of the student how would you feel the last three days honestly have been less not less they have been just humiliating to say the least but we are here do you have a degree can you see the booklet I'm carrying with me has qualifications and requirements for registration of presidential election candidates in order of every qualification that is required, every document that is required and on the requirement, the first request and requirement mm -hmm. is a certified copies of a degree certificate authenticated and or equated by commission 
for university education it's and number all, one and all yes it's number one okay. on the checklist of ibc mm -hmm. we presented this booklet the way it is to ibc with everything bound the way it is this is my copy they have a similar copy upon which ibc cleared us so you want to ask me that question if i have a degree yes i have a degree then what is the problem if you have a degree why did why are they purporting to revoke this if you have a degree i that's a question that i should be asking and you should be asking ibc they say they say you presented documents uh transcripts uh from the commission of higher education and all that but you didn't have a degree certificate which confers you owner as having graduated with a degree ken that is their opinion and i would say that as an opinion and i would base my argument on one basis mm -hmm. you cleared me when i presented myself and i believe and without no doubt that i possess a degree as walter mongari okay and in the fullness of time i'm sure ibc would have to answer to the kenyan people mm -hmm. because when you're cleared as a presidential candidate it's no longer about walter mongari it's about aspirations of millions of young people out there, mm -hmm. Kenyans who were looking for an alternative, Kenyans who are looking for a reason to vote, not the status quo. So I think IBC, in the fullness of time, mm -hmm. and to myself, I'm sure they'll be more than I'll be more than glad to be answered. Okay. Yes. I'll ask you this again because it's yes. important. You say that's the opinion as far as you're concerned. You have a degree you have finished your studies and you're supposed to graduate in november if i'm not wrong yes and uh, during the graduation they give you the power to read and write and confers you confer you with those honors right and then present a certificate that now indicates you have a degree that can you say that for certain without graduating you have a degree and what is the basis of saying that because they confer the honors and give you something to accompany it written your achievement ken mm -hmm. i'll tell you this i am knowledgeable and educated and i've gone to school there are some things that can be left to interpretations there are things that can be left to opinions but as i said earlier as far as walter mongare the presidential candidate Umoja Summit Party. I have been cleared, mm -hmm. and I was cleared, and the first person to be cleared to run. Mm -hmm. And I guess the onus is on, on IBC to prove otherwise. And I think that is something, as I said, in the fullness of time, we will get to know exactly the truth. I want to talk more about that, but even before I go, because mm -hmm. this was conferred, I want to play a soundbite from uh, from uh, the IBC uh, chairman Wafule Chibukati when you were given that certificate. Let's take a look. Upon discovery of new information on Walter Onjoka Mongare, on, as it relates to lack of academic qualifications, I invited him to appear before me today at 2 p.m. to clarify the issue. He failed to honor my invitation and pursuant to Regulation 43-2C of the Election General Regulations, I hereby revoke the nomination certificate of Walter Onjoka Mungare of Mocha Summit Party dated 2nd June 2022. Well, that's not the first sound that I was looking for, but they have been playing the video when he handed you over the certificate. But why didn't you appear when you were summoned by the IBC uh, chairman? If I recall, the chairman, when he was giving us the coveted certificate and clearance, he was very, very clear, and I hope you get the, the, the recording. Yeah. And he said very clearly, you now have the authority to go and campaign. The campaign period started on the 30th. Mm -hmm. We at Umwaja Sami Party, we've been very respectful of the law. And so we were waiting for the clearance in order for us to go out and campaign. Now, when you call me from the field where I'm campaigning, I think there's what you call fair hearing and fair process where you don't imagine I'm at the gate of bombers waiting for to be called just to be someone yes, come, just to be and answer someone to this. come, come yeah. and answer this mm. and and all i'm saying is uh ibc wrote to us officially and they said there are some issues that we need 
to discuss. And we got the letter and I responded to IBC and I told IBC, you have quoted some sections. Mm -hmm. It will only be fair for me to take time, look at the, 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 the sections that you've quoted. I prepare myself. Would you kindly give me another opportunity okay. uh, for me to come not the two o'clock that you are asking me to come? And, and that, that, that communication is available. So you were invited and you communicated. Yes. Uh, my question then is, are you moving to the dispute tribunal, the committee? Are you presenting yourself before them? Are you pre pre presenting your grievances before them? I, I don't think I have grievances, mm -hmm. to be honest, Ken. Uh, because as far as we are concerned, uh, we are very hopeful that we will still be on the ballot. Uh, number two, we are getting counsel and, and we are consulting in terms of what next and what we need to do. What is the next step that we need to take as a party? Um, my supporters and majority of the Kenyans out there are also waiting for a direction and in the fullness of time, once we, the consultations are done, once we seek audience with IBC in the, in the formal process that is expected, uh, we are very confident that we will still be on the ballot this year. One of the persons, I know you don't speak to the, uh, for them, but one of the persons who is at the center of this is the Safina party presidential aspirant or Candy Flagbera, mm -hmm. Jimmy Wanjigi, who has vowed to go to court and mm -hmm. fight this tooth and nail through my friend who is also the running mate, Willie Sotieno. And they are going to go to court and they have filed this in court to challenge this. Are you, do you want to be part of that? Because the outcome, if at all positive, could also favor you. Would you want to be part of that suit? Ken, if there's anything I know, that we are cleared individually. Okay. okay? We okay. appear before the commission individually. We don't get cleared collectively. And, and therefore, I want to believe that it's within the rights of the Safina party leader to, to, to move to the necessary levels if he feels aggrieved. Uh, I want to believe that everybody and every citizen who has dreams and aspirations to run for the presidency and for whatever reason they feel... Uh, they have been aggrieved to, to, you know, use the institutions of government that are available for, get to, for them to get redress. Okay. Yes. One of the things you said when you received your provisional nomination certificate yes. is that institutions, this is a testimony yes. that institutions in this country work. Yes. Is it time to walk back on those comments? No. Why? I still believe the institutions in this country work. And if I'm going to be the president of this country from August this year, I think I'm inheriting institutions that we can just streamline. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there are no great young, they, they are not great people and great Kenyans in civil service who do a, good, a great job. So I still believe and know that we have institutions that work. Okay. Yeah. Finally, on this, looking yeah. at, at at the clearings that you're granted by the IBC, looking at the documentation, the basis of which you got cleared. Sitting here as a Kenyan who's watching, mm -hmm. you think this is sufficient and the IBC had no reason whatsoever to walk back on this. That is something that we're getting counsel and get, getting guidance and um, in, in due time we will be in a position to adequately answer that question as, as I said earlier. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. So what is the next course of action for you? Are you campaigning? Yes. And, You're still uh, in the field? And, and thanks so much for giving me this platform to campaign because I saw like there's some research that came out today that uh, a big chunk of the Kenyan voters are still undecided. So uh, this is a great opportunity for me to tell them that uh, uh, don't despair. Be ready to, to go to the ballot. There is, there, is, there is hope, there is freshness, there is um, a new leaf of life that we need to give ourselves. So I'm still campaigning. I have no reason not to campaign. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I want to take you to your candidature for president. Um, mm. You have transitioned. Um, we grew up, you're not much older than I, but we grew up looking up to you. Mm. And one of the things that we know Nyambane for is uh, art, <coughs> uh, what you did. Um, a lot of people have said running for president for Nyambane was not serious business at all. One of the things that I find very interesting is that, Ken, if I was to look at all of us here and ask us what we studied in school and what we're doing currently, I can bet that the answer is on the opposite. Number two, rarely would we make reference to people's profession, like you're a lawyer because you're running, and you're a doctor and you're running. Now, why would we find it necessary to say you're a comedian, you're running? 
because comedy is a profession just like any other mm -hmm. 20 years ago we didn't have a streamlined comedy like we do today there are millions of, of of young people millions of kenyans earning from the comedy industry if there is anything i can tell you for free uh, today for the last almost nine years this country has been on campaign trail and people are so kind of stressed up mm -hmm. and there's so much anxiety there's so much almost almost we are angry at each other and and so having an opportunity to have a smile on your face and facing life with in a lighter way i don't think that can be criminalized mm -hmm. so i'm proud to be a comedian and besides being a comedian comedian as a profession there are young people that we've opened for doors in the talent space and i want to encourage people not to look at it as comedy mm -hmm. but to look at it as a profession but there are people who have done arts and i know you better you were of this more than i would there are people who have excelled in the field of arts mm -hmm. for example currently <coughs> sorry the people on the news is ukraine and russia yes the ukrainian president mm -hmm. was in the theater he is an actor mm -hmm. so i mean we can't we are not trivializing what you do thank you look at uh, madagascar for example mm -hmm. there's a dj president down there the U.S. had a thespian in Nixon. Nixon, as, yes. As a in Nixon, yes. So we're not trivializing this. Yes. But what Kenyans are saying, perhaps you just wanted something to add to you, CV, that uh, I ran for president. It wasn't serious business for you. That's the concern. Why are we, Ken, why are we talking in, in past? Why are we talking in, in, about my presidential ambition as the past? It's not the past. Because unless it's, it's the court coming up. Because unless the court changes things. It, it's not the court mm -hmm. that, that we haven't moved to court. We are still <coughs> consulting. Mm -hmm. uh, but not to lose the thought that you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, the Ukrainian president acted on TV as a president. Yeah. And he became. And you can see what he's doing. I, I want us to move past what we think people are okay. to who they really are. Yeah, the, the, perception, <coughs> the perceptions that we create about people's profession uh, is, 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 is a little bit off. Okay. Yeah. So aside from that, what is your plan on being president? What is the plan? How do you intend to be president? One, appeal to the Kenyans and talk about issues that affect us. Focus on the things that we need to change for ourselves and not focus on personalities i i don't think i have you know words to call other politicians who have ambitions like i do uh, i believe once we get an opportunity to you know other than the interruption that we've experienced once we get an opportunity to lay out our vision uh, for the country because I'm, I'm just one of the millions of kenyans out there who are looking at alternative leadership who are looking for a different way of doing things who are giving ourselves a chance again so i want to believe that we have enough days 60 days is sufficient for us to reach every kenyan with the mes message that we have and i want to that's your strategy you asked me yeah that's, yes, that's your you strategy me how i'll reach them yes i will reach kenyans with my vision and they will make the decision on the 9th of august this year for you to run for president in this country you need two things you need the people Mm -hmm. or, or you need one of the two or two things you need the people mm -hmm. and the money or you need the money or you need the people mm -hmm. which one do you have the money i have the people yes i have the people but how are you going to reach the people do you have the resources to reach the people uh, surprisingly the last time i checked ktn has a very huge coverage in this country and as we speak on this platform right now we are speaking to millions of people who are looking forward to our presidency so i'm already doing that Ken and thank you for the opportunity why you why me yes why you why should we wake up on the ninth to elect you to vote for you i want to believe that one every citizen has aspirations and dreams one of the things that i've seen and one of the things that i've known is that we are very good keyboard warriors we are always have we have we have all these great ideas and we are busy keep on keyboards on whatsapp groups on emails and everything else and none of us stands up to say excuse me i think we can stand up and be counted and so why me the first thing is i want to stand up to be counted 
and not to be a keyboard or background warrior of the things that we are unhappy about, but be at the forefront to present myself and present my views on behalf of the team, the great teams that are around me, and to give Kenyans an alternative. Everyone who's running currently, I'll come back to that, mm. they have something they stand for. They have something they're known to stand for. Mm. What does Walter Mungari stand for? That from the top of your mind, everyone would say, ah, that's Walter. This is what this guy stands for. And they'll give, he'll give them that confidence. What is the one thing that you stand for? One of the things that um, I stand for is that this country needs to be given an opportunity for the potential that we have particularly focusing on the future of our country. We talk about the country having a median age of 20.1 as the median age, and that means every other Kenyan is a 20-year-old. We talk about statistics and data that we, we have a young population. So what does Walter Mongari stand for? I stand for the opportunity of the young people of this country to be given a platform for them to dream afresh, look at things afresh, look at how we can maximize on the potential that we have, look at how we can use our technology to drive our health sector, to drive... That, that's that's uh, your know. vision. That's your vision. I'm yeah. asking what you stand for, what they can, they can, Kenyans can identify with and say, when they see you, this is what they see. Because I can mention all the candidates. Yeah. I, ca I can mention them and you will see what Kenyans identify them with. Yeah, I, I, I can, the advantage that we have and the you know the ability that we have to look at things differently you can sell a narrative and you can brand yourself or you can still appeal to people mm -hmm. for what you stand for and what you're asking me to, the, what am i standing for i stand for good leadership i stand for a country that maximizes our potential i stand for the potential that each one of us has in ourselves you have worked with I think two governors, if I'm not wrong, yes, directly. Two, two you have even worked with the president mm -hmm. at a state house. How did this inform your decision as Walter to run for president? What did you see outside there that we don't know that you'd want to share with us? Because you worked with governors, including the governor of Nairobi. <coughs> yes. You went and worked with state house. Mm -hmm. What is it that you know that we don't know about leadership? I, I had the privilege of working with Governor Ongwai in Kisi. Uh, the first term of devolution. And one of the things that I noticed is that as a country, devolution is the greatest game that we've had. And the first term, we had a fantastic time creating th th what you call the institutional framework to, you know, now bath uh, devolution and uh, devolved services to the people. Working with Kidero also gave me a different view uh, of, uh, because it was the same term give me a different view in terms of actually the next frontier right now of government is at the county level for service delivery to people. When I moved to State House, I realized that there are two things that must combine in order for us to give the citizenry uh, a better life. It's the policies in place and the legislation in place and the implementation thereof of the same thing. So I realized that the county governments are bringing the services closer to the people, but the presidency has the national policy framework that then is cascaded down to the, to the county level. And so the aspirations of Kenyans as a, as a country are held by the presidency in terms of policy framework. Mm -hmm. So with that experience, I realized I, I, would, I think I would do well in the policy level to have a bigger dream for the country mm -hmm. and then cascade it down, working in collaboration with the county government and deliver services to our people. You spent your early um, career um, studying uh, Daniel Turetich Arab, Arab Moore. You studied him <laughs> so much that you got into his character <laughs> and uh, at one point couldn't separate that. Then you uh, were away for some time, but later you came to work with President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, President uh, Kibaki right there in the middle. Um, which of these three presidents you think you will walk their footsteps? I think I'll pick elements from each. Okay. I will pick the efficiency and the charisma of uh, pres the late President Moy, who was almost uh, with precision when he came to his activities. I remember being a child 
And whenever we were told President Moy will pass here, at 9, 9 a.m., trust me at 9 a.m., Mzee Moy passed that place. That, that efficiency and that being, you know, being on time and, and respecting the value of time, I will borrow that from him. I will borrow the leadership style of Mzee Moy because a teacher, that's how they looked at him. He's just a teacher. But he ended and the up... the primary school teacher. Yes, exactly. Title, yeah. you know, and he ended up being a leader of this country for more than 20 years. Whatever we want to call him, it's an opinion that we have. But I would admire a man like Mzemoy. Kibaki, I will borrow his style of leadership of trusting and entrusting responsibility to his cabinet, to his people who are working with him. That once I've given you a cabinet docket, I will respect that you will be able to deliver and I will not have to interfere and I will not have to babysit you. And I think I will borrow that from Mze Kibaki. Do you know what I'll borrow from my former boss, President Uhuru Kenyatta? To be honest, he's a very kind-hearted and charismatic guy. He's, 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 he's a guy, he's the guy next door. When you meet Uhuru Kenyatta in person, he's a guy next door. Hearty laughter, happy go, go lucky, and at the end of the day, the president of this country. So I will combine all those things and bring out what is now Walter Mungari on to the front. So for you running for president is yeah. actually a serious thing. Do you believe you have the chance to win? If, let me say okay. the IBC mm. um, reverse this and tomorrow you have your certificate. Um, I, I would have loved if you said in the likely event that IBC will reverse that decision and give you You think it's unlikely? It's a likely occurrence, yeah. as I said. And we are optimistic that the journey still progresses I will be president of this country from August when the people go to the ballot. And the reason why I'm saying this mm -hmm. is, and I want to give you an example, 20, 2007, I think by lunchtime, we kind of knew who was the president, right? In 2007? Yes. Yeah. If you go back in history, and the person who we knew was president by one o'clock, was never president to be sworn in um, a few days later. So, Ken, why would you sit here and think that I won't make president? And yet we have not cast our votes, and yet they have not been counted, and yet they have not been announced, and the final uh, national uh, presidential returning officer has not made an announcement. So I would be very optimistic that I will make president. And it's not a laughing matter. They say this election has two horses, the rest are donkeys. Where are you? Um, surprisingly, they say, that's what they say. I, when, when we were having a conversation earlier, the lady was doing <clears throat> makeup on me, uh, said, um, you now look good. I think I'm proud to be human. I think I'm proud to be a man. And I will not call myself any animal. I would not wish to. So while the rest are horses, I think then I will need to ride some, some <laughs> one of the horses to step in. Yeah. Yeah. You're playing right there. I don't want you to campaign for these two gentlemen, but if, if, if you were to convince Kenyans, and you said at the beginning you were not going to call anyone names, if you were to tell us why we should not vote for Raila Odinga, we should not vote for William Ruto, and vote for you, what will it be? Don't tell us that, just vote for me. Tell us why these two leaders cannot be voted. And Listen. we have to vote for our talent. Listen, yeah. Ken, you have a responsibility as a, as a person, as Ken, and as a media house. So far, there are four candidates who have been cleared to run for You can't take me there, right? Walter. <laughs> and, 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 there. And, and, and we are actually five uh -huh. on the list. Uh -huh. So why are we talking about two and not talking about five? B because... They, why are we not talking about what you acquire? I'm talking about. I'll why are we talk not about, talking I'll, about? I'll, Ma, uh, I'll talk. Uh, I'll Maure. talk about them, why? about Maure and what yes, acquire. Yes. But I'm asking you because yes. I need. I need you to tell me yes. why Kenyans are watching tonight mm. should not vote for Raila Odinga, should not vote for William Ruto. Yes. Then you will tell me why Maure yeah. and and of course uh, the Rootsman what you acquire should not be voted. And and by the and way, should just vote you. The order that you should be mentioning as mm. is Walter Mungare cleared mm. first. Yes. All right. Wajakoya cleared second. second. Yes. 
uh, we had Maure, yes. then we had um, uh, uh, our Ruto? deputy president, yes. and then we had uh, the former prime minister. Uh -huh. So that's the order that you should be mentioning. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I, I would not mm -hmm. spend time fighting the battle of another person when I've got my vision to sell. I will not spare my airtime, honestly, to talking about a, another presidential candidate. I will not. I have so much to tell you. For instance, I, I, I was writing notes over here. The sacrifices that the rest of us have I'm, made. I'm, I'm going to talk, I'm, uh, to promote a particular, I, I know, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. But you have a platform to tell Kenyans why you deserve their votes and not someone else. And you think you're spending time promoting someone? Uh, it's in the context that you said. If you ask me to sell, and which you have asked me earlier, uh, to sell my vision, which I articulated, I will not you know, be afraid to articulate it again. Okay. Yes. But you're not going to... All right. Let's go to the substance now. Yeah. You have been known... There's a sector that was nowhere in this country. Mm -hmm. You had the courage, the four... The three of you, Juguna, yourself, uh, and uh, Kiari, right? Mm -hmm. Kiari is... Uh, is um, is a politician mm -hmm. right now, yeah. Dagoretti, member of parliament. Member of parliament. Uh, and Juguna does something with Safari. Come from? Uh, uh, he's a creative director. He's a freelance creative director. Okay, he's freelance. At, at and, and then you, who's worked for the national government and the county government. Yes. Totally different parts. But one of the things you set the stage for every upcoming artist mm -hmm. is a sacrifice when people feared to mimic more. You learned that he didn't. He really liked art, and you took it. So. Take us through your journey until now and why you think you are a source of inspiration to the youth, majority of whom you're looking to cast their votes in your favor. First, let me greet my fans, those who subscribed to the, the days that we, we had fun on stage and supported us to be who we are today. Um, I salute all of you. And I salute all those who forced their children at that point when they were young. I remember I would meet people, they are, they are with their three-year-old or four-year-old and their six-year-old and they still slap them and ask them, you don't know this guy? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, they would not know, but you know me, but they will read me as history. So I want to say that the last 25 years uh, have been beautiful, creating an industry from scratch. Uh, for a very long time, people would always ask me, when would you get a job? And, and that befell many of, uh, many of our people who are talented in one way or another, that they never looked at art as a form of source of income. They never looked at it as employment. They never looked at it as a career. And we are, we are humbled that 20 years on, that the creative sector, remember we started out as a music band, and that's, those are some of the things that you need to know. Tony was a fantastic, and he's a fantastic sax player. Uh, we used to have a band in, in Kenyatta University. I was playing keyboard, I was playing drums, and we could sing at times. And, and so we started off with that. And today when you see Kenyans, young Kenyans, and people earning from music, uh, from Skizatune, from distributing music, from having music shops, for us, it's humbling that we can actually get something done. Mm. Yes. And, and the youth, uh, that's, that's one of the favorite videos of all time. It just went, right, but when you were on the stage. The most important part of this question is what you have for the youth. The level of um, employment in this country, I don't want to quote the figures, lest I quote a wrong figure, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere near 40%, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that you realize quite early is self-employment. So among the things you're telling the youth tonight, what would you tell them about job creation and, and the importance of not depending on your education to create an, an opportunity for you? Because there's so many unemployed youth out here. I, I want to encourage <coughs> us that when we talk about education, mm. it's not the paper that you pro, pro, uh, possess. It's not what you went to class to study. Education is the attitude that you have towards reality of life. And if by statistics and and that is one of the things that we don't uh, we've not sufficiently used in this country we have data we have information but we are not sufficiently using it mm -hmm. we do know that majority of kenyans are below 35 but we are not galvanizing them towards the future of what we call work are we talking about jobs are we talking about work and in my experience as the director of youth i realized that we need to redefine work and job Mm -hmm. If there's anything the pandemic taught us, that, excuse me, there's another way of doing things other than what you do. 
there is technology that has checked in. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at young millionaires, young people making money from YouTube. I'm, I'm looking at young people becoming billionaires on a technological platform. I'm looking at multinational companies coming to Kenya because they think it's about the environment that is stable, but I realize they are coming for our young people. But our young people are being now utilized to give output rather than on what they are outputting. So if there's anything that I look forward to is maximizing and giving our young people this country back to them, redefining the workspace and creating the future of work. I ask myself right now, we are huge when it comes to financial technology as a country. How much of that do our young people own? Do we own this country? Mm -hmm. I guess I want to have young people of this country owning this country and shaping the destiny and defining the future of, of work. I have a couple of questions on that, but mm -hmm. I'll take you back to um, something that uh, we spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, how ready were you to run for president when you submitted your papers? Um, as ready as IBC pronounced me the first candidate to be cleared to run for president. I think that is the highest level of clearance that shows that you're ready to run for president. And then you can progress to the campaign level. If you were ready, yes. um, why did it take you long uh, to do this? Because you began at KU. Mm -hmm. That's where you are. That's where we knew Nyambane from. Okay. Um, and then uh, now you are graduating from Daystar. Yes. The question is perhaps 25 years on well, this awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why 25? Because that questions your readiness. Why 25? Then you decide, let me go to Daystar. I know you transferred your credits from your previous uh, institution to Daystar, but why 25 years? If there's anything I'm very proud of, I watched my 23-year-old daughter walk down the graduation red carpet as a graduate. You have a 23-year-old daughter? 24 to be precise. Oh, okay. We gave birth to that beautiful girl when I was in my second year at Kenyatta University. Mm. And that changed everything. You're a young student, you're at the university, you have this wonderful baby that God has blessed you with, and so you start thinking about their tomorrow. Which, by the way, is what I want to pray that my government will change. That parents do not have to worry about their children's future because the future is secured now. So 24 years ago, Tracy comes to life and everything changes. You start taking care of a young family. You start, you know, uh, doing, you know, small jobs at the same time you're doing your study. I remember one time we were performing at, uh, at, at a restaurant in Kasarani as a band. And I had my mathematics book on the side of the keyboard that during the break when the MC is speaking, I can peruse through because I've got a cut tomorrow. And so, because life is not just on a straight line. Life is not about you do this and then when you're done with this, then you have this and then when you... Life is such a, a twisted, uh, you know, curve. And there are ups and downs. And so, I took time to take care of my little family then. I uh, decided to go to a, a little college on, on Mombasa Road called cool, cool, cool Graphics. I did a small certification which gave me a job at, uh, at your competition. In term, uh, uh, I worked here at, uh, at, at Standard before, but before that I had worked at Nation at, as, uh, at, as a graphic designer back in 2001 because mm -hmm. of that certification. I was teaching at Buruburu Institute of Fine Art as, as a lecturer because of the skills that I'd acquired along the way. Okay. So it's a journey that at that point I needed to ask myself, I have a small baby, I've got a young family, I've got to take care of them. Education, That's priority then. education yeah. will, I, I, and I was inspired by one of my landlords and I think, I think uh, Mr. Wayo, wherever he is, he was doing his PhD at 75 and I asked Mr. Wayo, why are you doing your PhD at 75? And he told me, I want to die smart. I was like, okay, then that means education never dies. But opportunities, and that is what I would always encourage anyone, when an opportunity knocks at the door, it doesn't knock twice. Take it right. Class, mm. if you're determined like I was, I was not ashamed to watch my daughters graduate when I have not graduated. 
I was not ashamed. Sitting on the table, my son has homework to do, and I've got homework to do, and my daughter has got homework to do. And, and so the journey of education, it's not just a journey that you do because it's been ordered. It's straight and narrow. What, okay. what, what, are your, what, what are the opportunities that come knocking? Okay. And that, for me, I want to say that when the word says that your talent will take you before great men, by the way, it does. You have been the, the, dying with yes, the kings. Yes, yeah. it does. Okay. Uh, um, this goes to questioning your preparedness to run for presidency, but you, you, you have explained it uh, adequately. Um, there's this group of thought, uh, school of thought, that um, you should probably have started from Governor Kisi or <laughs> Member of Parliament or Senate or even a uh, member of county assembly yeah. before going for president. Why yes. did you decide <clears throat> that you're going for president? Oh, awesome. I like that school of thought. Do you know why? Because I have one belief. As a, as a, as a practicing Christian and a spiritual man, I've always told myself one statement, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, all things in my, in my thinking is that even the presidency is one of those things. And why would I think that it's protocol that I need to follow? At 47 years old, I think I am ready to serve the country at my prime because I do know that retirement age in this country is 60. So I want to be of service to the country at the highest level. And by the way, Ken, honestly, mm -hmm. after spending five years in State House, after understanding how the presidency works, why would I go back to representing people at the MCA level, not that I don't respect, but I must also allow other people who have been with the people down there to present themselves to the people so that I can present myself as state ups. I talked about the resources mm -hmm. and um, the question that now um, a lot of Kenyans are asking, and if you look at uh, what's being said in the social media mm -hmm. regarding uh, why go to school when you have money. I mean, everyone's <laughs> journey is different. Yes. You can decide that Walter left school 24 years ago, 23 years ago, before you went back to Daystar. And um, you have the resources. You're running for president. So the question, a lot of people, and this is something that the youth need to know, that mm -hmm. journeys are different. I am a lawyer <laughs> sitting in a newsroom today. Yes. Right? So the journeys are different. But the, the question is, why go to school if you can create money and get people who are learned to work for me? School gives you exposure. Schools in, school enables you to understand what you're doing. Mathematics is not a subject. It's a lifestyle. As a businessman, how would you know how to count your money if you don't do mathematics? So it's not that school is an option to riches. It is what creates the wealth. So trust me, you've got to understand and you've got to be learned and you've got to go to school in order for you to do what you want to do. And that is what I believe education is. So school is imperative. Uh, it, it is everything. All right, I'm coming back to talk to you more, but I, I'd like to play the video of the week. Tonight, we have uh, two for the prize of one. Now, this video is of uh, abortion activists who stripped down to their underwears in a protest at uh, Joel Austin's Texas mega church, and uh, they were escorted out screaming, my body, my choice. Now, the three abortion activists stormed Joel Austin's Texas mega church this Sunday, just a few days ago, stripping down. And uh, in protest over the Roe versus Wade, you know what this case is about, the Roe versus Wade. It's a big case, and I'll tell you uh, when we play the second video why it's important. Now, the three women from the group Rise Up for Abortion Rights sat throughout Austin service at the Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Then the three rose to their feet once he had finished and began screaming, My body. My choice and overturn. They also said overturn. Raw hell no. They refuse. They don't need to be overturned. Here's that video. Then we play the second video. It's my body, my choice. It's my body, my choice. Overturn, girls. Hell no. My body, my choice. I am who I say I am. I do what I say to do because I. I 
Oh, that's uh, that was quite something in charge. That that was that was quite something in charge. And uh, that church, Lakewood, you are an SD like myself, right? I, I really want to go to Lakewood whenever I go to Texas. I really want to go to that. But before you comment, <laughs> let's put some context to the video we have seen. Now, on the 3rd of May, a leaked opinion from the Supreme Court in the U.S. So it had voted to strike down the landmark Roy versus Wade decision. I'll explain. Now, according to an initial draft, majority opinion read, written by one Justice Samuel Alito circulated inside the court and obtained by uh, what we are quoting tonight is political. The draft opinion is a repudiation of the 1973 decision which guaranteed federal constitutional protection of abortion rights and a subsequent 1992 decision that uh, that was the planned parenthood versus Kasi. now that largely maintained the right that was enshrined in Roe versus wade and uh, of course justice alito says that the court hold that Roe versus Kasi must be overturned he writes in the document labeled as, quote, opinion of the court, that's the Supreme Court, it is time to heed the constitutional and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representative. So as I play the second video, there will be a small pause in the middle of the video. I want you to pay attention to that, then I'll come back to Walter. Take a look. It's my body, it's my choice, it's my body. The most interesting part of that video for me yeah, yeah. is those Kenyans. They just Ken. took the opportunity and yeah. leashed the Kenyan flag. Ken, yeah. uh, I'm glad that the Kenyan flag was covering some situations. <laughs> and, and I'm also proud that uh, our Kenyans are representing us well out there. And that's the diaspora that we talk about, by the way, incidentally. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, the diaspora are going to vote for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as the numbers may not be high, but at least we are making steps. It's a different. Remember, uh, it's yeah. 50 percent plus one. Okay. One vote counts. Yeah, one vote. Yeah, and, one and, vote and, and so we want to encourage our brothers and sisters in diaspora to, you know, to prepare to to vote and uh, to vote for Walter. Thank you, uh, Ken. Let me let me interview you now. What, what position would you like to have in my government? Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, when the, that opportunity comes, uh, you can be thinking about it. Yes. Uh, but I would, uh, I have an idea, but I, w I will let you know. Okay, if, yeah. okay, okay. But carry on. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> do you believe, we have a few minutes of the clock, mm -hmm. do you believe the 2022 general election, Walter, will be free, fair, credible, and verifiable? We know what happened in 2017. Do you believe, <clears throat> as a candidate, because I'm calling you a candidate, it's yes. a little bit controversial. Mm -hmm. By one, the certificate was revoked verbally. It's not been, uh, you have they've not gazetted it. At least I've not seen the gazetting yes. that it's been revoked. And secondly, because this issue is in court, and if it affects one party, it could also affect you because it's okay. the same yeah. premises that uh, your candidature was uh, recalled. So, yeah, do you believe it will be free, fair, credible, and verifiable in 2022? If I'm going to pride myself as a leader of this country, then I must have faith in our institutions. I think what we, we have become, we've, we've sensationalized a lot of our institutions mandate, where we cast aspersions before we even give an opportunity for people to do their job. I want to believe that this election will be fair. I have reason to believe that it will be credible. I have reason to believe that Kenyans will be out here to vote and their will will prevail. Does that fair component constitute you being backed in the ballot? Is that the prism you view it with? If I'm on the ballot, it'd be fair, or with or without Walter, it's fair. First, I will be on the ballot. You'll be Thank on the ballot, you. okay? Uh, okay. Mm. And I still believe it will be fair. I said this before. I I have nothing against IBC as an institution. I have nothing against anyone. There are officers who are brilliant. There there are officers who served us when we went there, and we. And that's the premise by which I'm saying I've worked in government and there are great young men and women, there are old people uh, in government who do a fantastic job. So it doesn't mean that because we sensationalize 
institutions to, for our own gain that the institutions are not working. Mm -hmm. There are millions of, of civil serv servants out there delivering service to the yeah, people. Good job. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I, I know that okay. we will be on the ballot. And by the way, it's not that we will be back. Uh, can I just want to correct that. Mm -hmm. You can only say that we will be back something that has totally been taken from us. I think the administrative processes that are going on in the background, uh, the conversations we are having with the IBC to resolve the matter in an amicable way that is progressive uh, will bear fruits. And we are, we, we, we are optimistic that there is no wrongdoing, as I showed you from the beginning. We presented ourselves among the other 47 uh, Kenyans who wanted to run and we were the first to be cleared. And therefore, we are confident that we will be on the ballot. What's your position? What is your stand on corruption, Walter? Uh, corruption for me, it's a moral issue. It's not a, an economic crime. It's a moral issue. As a country, we've lost our moral fabric. Mm -hmm. Because why would you want to get things from the back door? It's because you're morally corrupted. And so for me, the first level of corruption is our morals when, before we move to the economic part of it. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that we as a country and all of us in one way or another, we have contributed to the state that we are as a country when it comes to corruption. Therefore, it takes a collective responsibility, mm -hmm. all of us, to, to deal with that. But I do know that if you have a country that is under service and are people who are accountable, and people who are accountable and for us knowing that if you undertake something that is unlawful there's punishment that comes with it then i would not be worried about how would corruption. you propose to deal with corruption past corruption yes yeah how would you propose uh, to do it th there are two ways i would easily you know look at that number one as a government that is that we will be as a regime that we will be Delivering service to the people in the manner that they deserve and in the time they deserve automatically reduces the load on corruption. Because if can, you're getting what you need to get in real time and you're getting the services why you need to bribe your way. Two, my workforce as the civil service, which I will be very proud of, how can I incentivize them so that I can reduce the, the, the impact of their remuneration okay. uh, that then leads to this economic crime that we are talking about. A couple of years ago, almost 40 years ago, the civil servants and corporate sector, the salaries were almost the same. 40 years later, in fact, in fact, in fact, 40 years ago, the civil servant, everyone was running to civil servant because it had a, a bigger pack mm -hmm. and it was more stable and you earn more money. Now we are running to civil corporate. service because now, it's just stable. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, no yeah, money. Yes. Now, the kind of government that I want to run, which is a smart government, yeah. is to incentivize our people uh -huh. so that I don't have to expose them to fighting corruption when I should be incentivizing my people okay. and I should be encouraging my workforce. The last thing I will do, and I will tell you this, what is that that we call economic crime? Oh, there's money that was stolen from this project. There's what we call financial leakage in any project. That is what planning is all about. That is why I have the planning di division, mm -hmm. economic planning division, where you, you do your financial forecast on any project. How much do we need? How much do we, can we lose because of time? Because of the, imagine a road being constructed and we have to extend because of rain. We have to extend because we never anticipated a certain rocky place and you have to extend the contract of, of, of the, the contract of a, a supplier. All I'm saying here, Ken, is once we sort out and we give people and the people of Kenya what they deserve, good service, um, workers are paid on time and commensurate to their input, I don't think I'll have corruption to worry about. Okay. Yeah. I want not to take your minute because at the end of it, I'd like you to tell your supporters what you need to tell them. I'll give you that one minute for honoring our invite. Mm. But um, I see a tweet here that I have to read. Yeah. Uh, Walter Nyambani is just beginning. He wants when government is formed, you want to to be considered because whoever forms the government, if it's not you, would say we can work with this guy. He had good policies, he had good ideas. Let's incorporate it. That's what. Uh, so you're just using your running to bargain for a higher position in whoever forms the government. You're not even bothered if you, it's cancelled or not. You candidate. Oh, that's an that's that's a nice opinion. 
that somebody has mm. but that's not a fact and um, I'm, I'm, I'm running because I believe I'm, I'm an alternative that we need to give ourselves a chance okay. I believe I've got what it takes as, <clears throat> as a president to, to, to run this country I believe I have you know, expertise, exposure I've, I've got sufficient uh, knowledge when it comes to government matters, having served in government. So it's it's not a question that I'm doing this on for for bargaining. If I was doing that, I would be among the many parties that folded up, killing our democracy to to run into coalitions. Mm -hmm. And this is, and I can tell you, this is one of the only other parties that has a presidential candidate. Okay. Yeah. Out of the eighty plus. Yeah. All right. As we end, you have mm -hmm. one minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, First, thank you, Ken, and thanks for the family of KTN for this opportunity for us to speak to our supporters and give them our confidence that, number one, uh, we learned, just like you did, the unfortunate um, incident and, and readout of our candidature and the, the revocation, uh, but we are taking the necessary administrative processes, uh, having engaging um, um, engagement with uh, IBC for an amicable uh, way forward, and we want to assure our supporters that we will be uh, on the ballot and the journey will still uh, progress. We look forward to being of service to you and we look forward to you considering us humbly uh, for your vote come the 9th of, of, of August. And I thank you. Walter Mungare, alias uh, Nyambane, thank you so much for coming tonight, brother. Thank you. And I wish you all the best in uh, whatever you do. Yeah. At the end of the day, we are Kenya, and Kenya is our business, and that's why we take uh, keen interest in what happens around us. I want to thank you for coming thank this you. evening to KT News and the News Hour specifically. And thank you for watching. Next week, another good day or good week to have a great conversation right here on News Hour. My name is Ken Mijungo on behalf of the whole team, Marisha Witi earlier on, on sign language. I want to thank you for watching. But remember, tomorrow, Parliament, for the last time, sits. Speaker Muturi will call it to order. And when they walk out, and it's, there's a special sitting in the two months, in the 62 days, this is the end of the 12th Parliament. The Senate prorogues, I think, next week. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. We have that covered for you tomorrow.